So to be fair, months ago I had this idea, but I started this uh, to prepare this talk yesterday, and <laughs> and today my uh, screen explode when I was trying to finish my slide. Yes, that that's true. Hello, friends. Uh, thanks for having me. So my name is uh, Maurizio Mangione. Uh, I am better known as Granze uh, on the internet. I'm a Google Developer Expert, a Microsoft MVP, and many, many years ago, I founded Milano.js. That is a JavaScript community in, uh, in Milan, of course. And in January, I moved to Amsterdam uh, because I joined the zone as a developer advocate. Okay, so... We had a lot of talk today, a lot of interesting stuff uh, about React, but my talk will be different. So what will be my, my talk about? What was the topic of, of my talk? So let's go to the table of content together and let's find out. So first of all, web nostalgia. So web nostalgia is a crucial part of this talk because to really understand the topic of web standards, we need to understand the context. So I want to make sure that we are on the same page when it comes to the story of the internet and the story of the web. And then uh, also I'm getting old. So like all the old people, uh, I like to tell stories, funny stories, stories like, oh, when I was young, you remember this and that, and this kind of thing. So that's why web nostalgia. So internet memes, because everyone loves internet memes, right? So I put some memes because I know you will love it, but after years of talk, this time I wanted to challenge myself. So I decide to not use pictures of cats. I, I know, I know, I know. Come on. I, I just wanted to challenge myself because if I put a picture of a cat, it's an easy win, right? So no matter the content. So yeah, let's do it. Of course, we will have some code because not that much because I know you are tired. But we have some code because at the end of the day, this is a tech, tech, uh, tech um, uh, conference, right? And last but not least, some random stuff because why not? So this talk is about web standards. And I really love web standards. Web standards are the foundation of the web. And we love the web. We work with the web. So they're really important. So let's start from the beginning. So the year 2000 is not the beginning of the web. It's not the beginning of the internet. So what's, uh, well, why is so important this year? So this year is important to me because I got my first paid job as a web designer because back in the days when I was young, <laughs> That was the title. So we used to have web designer and webmasters. That was really, really funny. So back in the days, the tool of the trade was Microsoft front page. So Microsoft front page uh, was like uh, Word, but with a button published for the web. And that's it. And it was a visual tool but you had the possibility to look at the code because there was a tab like view source, something like that, I can't remember exactly. And so you were able to look at the code. 
and so I did and I was really fascinated by this bunch of tags uh, but I cannot really understand the meaning of this tag and I think that if I want to look today in a code generator by generated by front page maybe I will struggle <laughs> uh, even though I kind of know HTML now after almost 20 years so I was so fascinated that I said okay I really need to understand what's going on I need to learn HTML so I buy a book so back in the days this was maybe the, the only way to learn new stuff. So I start studying HTML and I was happy. And after, you know, a couple of months, I thought, well, HTML is not a big deal. It seems really easy to me. And then I came across this book from Jeffrey Zellman and the title is Designing Web, Web Standards. And that's why uh, the title of this talk is Coding with Web Standard. So, Jeffrey Zeldman, the master Jeffrey Zeldman, actually changed my life because with this book, I really realized that actually HTML was a big deal because we all used to just put a bunch of tag in the page without understanding the meaning, the semantic of this, of this tag. So, this book changed really my view of the internet, of the web. So first of all, I learned that tables are not meant to, to use for, for the layouts. So we were supposed to do layouts of our website just with CSS. I know it sounds silly now because it's obvious, but back in the day, it was like, what? How can I put, you know, two column together? Is that's insane. So I totally embraced this philosophy because I really liked this this point of view, this approach, and of course, it's not just a philosophy. There were some reasons behind this. So first of all, technical reason. So uh, the reason to not use tables were. Uh, first and foremost for an accessibility uh, issue and also for performance. This is the splash screen of my website in 2001 and as you can see some pieces of the images uh, of the image are missing. Uh, this is because we use back in the days to split the images and put the images in different table cells because we were sure that this was uh, a way to improve performance because instead of waiting for all the image to, to be loaded, we, you know, kind of see this image, you know, compose. And we were wrong, actually, because <laughs> this was not faster. This was actually slower. But, you know, the perf performance are not just real performance, but also perceived performance. So it works. Oh, so, sorry, <laughs> didn't want to scare you. So <laughs> back in the days, we had just to support Internet Explorer. And I know what you are thinking. Oh, that's nice. Not because of Internet Explorer, but because we had to uh, support just one browser. But that was not really true because back in the days we had Internet Explorer 5, 5.5 and 6 that coexist for years. And the thing is that these three browsers were three totally different browsers. It was really, really hard. And we also had EF5 for Mac, that, that's incredible. And there is a nice story behind uh, Internet Explorer for Mac because most all the websites on the internet were broken 
if you try to browse uh, this website uh, with Internet Explorer 5 for Mac. So we thought, okay, this browser sucks. But the reason why all these websites were broken is because Internet Explorer 5 was the first browser ever to support standards. But the website were not designed with standard in mind. Do you recognize this snippet of ugly code? This was a really common snippet we use, and this snippet saved my life a lot of time. This is the box model hack, and this because the the version of Internet Explorer. This because the problem with the box model. So some version of Internet Explorer counted margin, padding, and border with the width, some other not. And you know that if you want to build a layout, this could be a problem. This is a problem, actually. So what's the correlation between the box model and Internet Explorer 5 for Mac? This guy. This guy is Tantek Selic, or Selic, I don't know, a former Microsoft engineer. And this guy is a guy that uh, worked on Tasman, that was the engine of uh, Internet Explorer 5 on Mac, so was the, the guy who introduced the standard in an engine, in a browser, but he's also the guy that invented the box model hack. The fact is that everyone remember him for this crappy piece of code, poor, poor man, that, that's, that's a pity. Uh -huh. So, you know, it, it was really a tough period. So, I was looking at me and I was feeling like a CSS Zaratustra. So, if you don't know who Zaratustra is, so you, you have to read, I encourage you to read a wonderful book by Friedrich Nietzsche that is called Tools Spoke Zaratustra. So, Zaratustra was a sort of prophet, and he was traveling the world advocating uh, the humanity, the man, to become better man, so the ubermensch, right? But, of course, of course, a change like becoming a, a better man involves a lot of effort, a lot of, a lot of sacrifice, and of course, people don't want to do effort, to so do sacrifice for things that, you know, they can touch. So they made fun of him, and you know, okay, we are, we are fine, thank you, bye. So, and I was feeling like that. So I was trying to advocate, you know, the CSS for the layouts, and all my colleagues at the time were, you know, so stressed because they weren't able to, to build a layout, and they were singing me like, tables, 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 like this. So, so those were exciting times. So we had this fancy uh, gift, and I think that the dancing baby is still the scariest thing in the internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in 2004, we got the first draft of HTML5. So HTML5 was different from the previous version because apart from new tags, new elements, we got also new APIs, so JavaScript APIs. And this was really a revolution. And the browser vendor, even though this was still a draft, decided to adopt this new standard before uh, this really became a standard. And this because the idea was really good. So they all agreed that it was a good idea to implement this standard. And we were lucky because HTML5 eventually became a standard in 2014. 
but yes, we, we started earlier to, to use this, this API. But let's go back to mid-2000. Microsoft came out with this. And this was huge. This was really, Microsoft here dropped the bomb. So Microsoft XML HTTP allowed us to call a server, get some data back without reloading a page. Magic. <laughs> this was incredible. This was a beautiful idea, was really brilliant. But there was a problem. And the problem is this. It was based on ActiveX objects that was a Microsoft technology. So it wasn't an open standard. So some guys decide to create a standard based on the same idea. And they create XML HTTP request. XML HTTP request. So, but, you know, it wasn't successful for the beginning because it was so hard to spell. So, as my <laughs> <laughs> so, a smart guy came and said, can we call it Ajax? <laughs> yes, brilliant, go for it. <laughs> and this revolution has brought us to the modern web era. Today, a shiny era for the internet. So today, we have a lot of stuff. We have a lot of new APIs. We have a lot of new standards. Some are standards, some are just drafts, some are just ideas, proposal. So <clears throat> during this talk, we're going to uh, look at two of them that I really like. And the first one, I think is the most underrated uh, and misunderstood technology we have today. Web components. A lot of people like web components. I love web components. And web components are based on these four APIs. You don't have to use all the APIs to create your web components. You can just use custom elements. Uh, you are good to go. But the thing is that from your point of view, web components are really, really a good idea because they're part of the foundation of the web, HTML, right? So we are able to extend the HTML vocabulary with new elements, with new tags. And this is brilliant. It's not a new idea because we had this idea back in the days when XHTML came out. The X was for extensible. So the idea was already there, but no one was able to find out a way to implement this. So many years ago, Google tried to propose uh, an idea, a way to extend the HTML with the famous or infamous uh, V0 um, spec. But a lot of people don't like web components, and I don't know why. So I came across this tweet from a guy, I don't know, I never heard about him, but I was, why? So I saw a lot of confusion in these tweets, and when I came across this kind of tweets, normally I just ignore it. But I came across this tweet, because it was retweeted by a really, really famous uh, developer. And I was surprised. First of all, because I will never, ever retweet and endorse a tweet for a guy, from a guy with this attitude. So let's read the tweet. The web component story about state management is wild. So like, how do I pass an object or a function as a prop to a web component? Sorry, the HTML spec limits attributes to just strings. What's the point of adding shit to the platform if we can't add shit to the platform? <clears throat> okay, but 
the bad part of this thread is the guy that we will call Michele. It's not the real name, almost. <laughs> this guy endorsed this tweet. That is bad because you know you, you will mm, you will not achieve anything with this kind of attitude. It's just wrong. So this guy nailed it here. This is a huge thing that web components could learn from React that would increase their usability hundred times. Okay, so since I respect this developer and I think that he is way way better than me. I thought, well, maybe I missed something. Let's read the tweet again. The web component story about state management is wild. I don't know what this means, but web components are not about state management. I said, okay, let, let's go, let's go ahead. So, so like, how do I pass an object or a function as a prop to a web component? How do I pass a function or object as a prop to a web component with a prop? So, wh what's the question? I don't get it. Okay, let's go ahead. Sorry, the HTML spec limits attributes to just string. That is kind of true, but are we talking about props or attributes? because they are not the same thing. So, what the hell? And let's skip the last part, that is just a useless rant. So, <clears throat> seeing that, I, you know, I understand that these people, is, this guy is angry, this guy is a bit confused, and maybe he just misunderstood the, the API. And I thought, Okay, let's ignore this guy. No, because someone was wrong on the internet and I had to do something. So I answer the tweet, I replied to tweets uh, with this snippet that I wrote. It's a super simple web component. So we create a class that extends from the HTML element. We have a constructor and a getter and setter, blah, blah, blah. And what I'm doing here is selecting my, my element, that is my dash L, and I'm assigning with a dot notation um, a value that is an object, and my object is a property. So how do we pass an object or a function to a property? Like this. Here you go. <laughs> and then I want to retrieve the content of the, the properties. Here we go. The JavaScript, right? The JavaScript we know and love. So, what's the problem here? So, some people complain because, yeah, okay, but this is shit, look at this. Well, okay, so, not a big fan of getter and setter, but the thing is, the custom element API is not a library, is not a framework is a low-level API. What do you expect from a low-level API? It should be like that, because low-level API are meant to be, you know, the foundation. You have to build something on top of this API. You can use it like this, Vanilla. Here you go. But probably you don't want to, because if you have a simple component with like 10 props, you need 10 getter and 10 setter. Of course, it's verbose. It's not nice to code, right? So we need we need something. We need a small layer of abstraction, maybe. So it's like comparing apples and orange. It doesn't make sense. That's the point. And even though I like both orange and apple, I will never put a slice of apple in my spritz because it's not right. So, are web component bad? No, they are amazing. And they are really the building blocks of the web because we are extending the base language of the web that is HTML. 
and what we are building today is really complex. So the basic elements, the basic tag, HTML tag we have today are not enough. So we need to create other tag, other elements that extend the language. And that's cool. So if you want to try web components, I encourage you to start with lit element and hyper HTML element because this is a small abstraction on top of uh, the custom element API. So it's really easy to start, it's super nice, and you can play with it. I'm not here to try to change your mind or to say that Rack sucks, oh fuck it, let's go with uh, vanilla JS, let's go with uh, web components. I used to, uh, to be a React developer, let's say. Uh, in the past, I enjoyed React, I like React, so that's not the problem. Just don't be a fanboy. Don't be a library hooligan. So, the second standard I like to talk to you is progressive web apps. So, progressive web apps are a bunch of technology, a bunch of standards, so it's hard to define properly uh, what progressive web apps are because there are a bunch of things. But just to start, uh, we know that uh, progressive web app has been defined as the most exciting thing that happened to the web since Ajax. And that's a bold statement, right? Actually, I say this, but <laughs> you, you, you can trust me. So let's go through just two components, two core components of service worker, of a web progressive web app. So the first one is service worker. So service worker are really cool because they're like a proxy between the client and the server and they're able to intercept uh, the call uh, we, we send to, to the server. Uh, we can do something with, with this. So let's start from the beginning. So the thing I like from progressive web app is the progressive world because this means progressive enhancement. So we can add, you know, in a in an easy way uh, the support from this kind of thing just if the browser implemented this API. So we can just do a feature detect and look if service work is available on the global navigator object and if it is, we can register our service worker. In our service worker file, we need to listen to the install event and do something. So what we can do? So for example, we can use the cache API. The cache API is really cool and is really easy to, to, to use. So here we are creating a new cache. We have an array with strings and this array contains the resources we want to, to cache. So going back to the install events we just saw, uh, what we are doing here, we are creating a new cache we are downloading the resources and we are putting these resources in this cache. And if you want, if you want to retrieve these uh, resources, we just need to listen to the fetch event. And in this case, what I'm doing is try to figure out if there is a match between the resources I'm requesting and the resourcing I have in the cache. So if the, there is a match, I will serve the resources from the cache and not from the, from the net, from the server. So, but what is the difference between the browser API that we know and uh, the cache API? So we have a client and a server and we need to uh, download some resources but we have already cached these resources on our machine in our browser. The thing is that sometimes it takes time to request these resources and to get a response back. And this can happen for a lot of reasons, right? So the difference here is that if I manage the request with a service worker, I can decide if there is a match to 
uh, <coughs> give back the, the resources I have cached, so I don't need to hit the server at all. And this means that you can have an instant loading and also that you can browse offline because I don't need to hit the server. And I think this is really, really good. So you can implement different caching strategies with your service worker and this is super cool and it's also super easy. So if you are familiar with promises and events, you're good to go. If you wanna try service worker, PWA, I really encourage you to use WorkboxJX. It is a small library by Google. Uh, it implements all the caching strategies, so you don't have to implement uh, all the strategies by yourself. And it gives you also other uh, nice utilities. So, web standards. I know web standards. And the message I, I want to deliver today is that even though web standards are maybe not perfect, maybe they're not fully adopted yet, they deserve more love. And, you know, libraries and frameworks come and go, but standards are here to stay. So again, please, don't be a fanboy, don't be a framework hooligan, because this doesn't help at all. Before I go, I have a special announcement. But first, I need to apologize with you. I need to apologize with you because I lied. I lied, but f for a good cause. Look at this. Look at this. This is not a cat. This is my cat. His name is Otto Chi. Right now, he is at home, alone, in Amsterdam. And probably he is sad. Because I'm not here. I'm not there. I'm here. The problem is that he is often alone because they travel the world fighting the good fight for web standards. <laughs> so, if from now on you will give more love to web standards, maybe my mission will be complete and my cat will never be alone again. Thank you.